Our world revolves around cars. They're much more than horsepower and optimized features. We live in them. Hurtling through space on our way home, to work, errands, or picking up tasty takeout. We know the inside of our cars, intimately. But the interior of historic carriages, life before the automobile, that world is alien territory to us. So, let's go there. Now. Many vehicles displayed inside the carriage museum are behind railings out of visitors reach. Enclosed carriages with well-preserved original interiors cannot be seen inside. In this video we climb in, explore, and dissect three vehicles. This chariot d'Orsay was made by Mion and Guillet, a French carriage builder in about 1880, for William K. Vanderbilt I. He was, briefly, the Gilded Age's wealthiest man, living in New York and Oakdale, Long Island. His son, William K. II, was the auto enthusiast who built Motor Parkway, the nation's first limited access road designed exclusively for cars. By contrast, Dad was a carriage guy, and this coach was meticulously customized. You enter with silver drop handles featuring Vanderbilt's monogram. Although the Dorsay's exterior was largely restored, the handles and metalwork is still original. To climb in, there are folding steps covered in elaborately tooled Moroccan leather and satin. The egress is tight, and one imagines it was a squeeze for a bulky 1880s dress. The original interior is beautifully trimmed in maroon silk satin. Carriage trimming includes the upholstery, carpeting, and decoration of a carriage, and this is a fine example. There are silk shades to protect passengers from the sun or provide privacy. The interior is plush but practical, storage pockets, ivory fittings, and special mahogany cases to hold calling cards or documents. Another rare survivor is this gypsy wagon. This was owned by Phoebe Stanley, a Romany English immigrant who came to the U.S. in the 1850s, settling in Massachusetts. Why rare? First, there's the custom of burning a gypsy's possessions at death. Second, the vehicle barely escaped the hurricane of 1938. Inside, there's living space, and it's no surprise that gypsy wagons have recently made news as adaptive reuse microhomes. About as much space here as a tiny Brooklyn studio apartment. A platform bed rests below a ruby glass window with an etched eagle, part of the ornate glasswork throughout. There's ample storage below the bed and two decorated bench seats on the sides. The vehicle's exterior has painted landscapes, figures, and horses. Emblems of good fortune and the occupation of Phoebe's husband, a horse trader. One more thing. In a routine cleaning of the vehicle by the museum in the 1980s, this 1880 birthday card to Phoebe was found in the window track. Our final visit is to this fancy enclosed sleigh known as a booby hut. A booby hut? How on earth did it get that name? The answer? We're not really sure. In 19th century parlance, the word booby was derisive, a label for an obnoxious person. Somehow the negative term became associated with an elegant winter vehicle. It was made by J.T. Smith a carriage builder on Washington Street in Boston. It's luxurious. There's a beautifully trimmed fabric in multiple shades of red inside. The ceiling is pleated red damask with a central rosette. Elsewhere there are window pulls, broad lace, and holders in maroon and red silk. The seats and backing are trimmed in ribbed velvet plush. As with the chariot d'Orsay, there is, again, a wooden calling card case. There's also a velvet storage pouch and a folding child seat. Most interesting is the pneumatic device in this mesh pouch. It operates a whistle 
Squeezing it signals the coachman. The Long Island Museum's one-of-a-kind carriage collection in Stony Brook, more than 200 horse-drawn vehicles of every description, provides a cross-section of life before cars. Carriages meant as much to their world as automobiles mean to ours. And this collection gives you a passport to that lost place.